If all of us said we're going to try to make one kid in the city of Chicago have a better shot at it, we'd have an incredible educational system. Sometimes it's, that's part of the problem because mostly parents are working like I work and then sometimes I try my best to like be checking after them even though they get back and they, you know, you're invading my privacy, but uh, that's not their privacy, that's their education. <laughs> Ultimately, it's our children that need this from us, that need us to step up and do this for them. Sometimes fewer than 50% of the children come to school the first day with any school supplies. So it's very difficult to teach if the kids don't have pencils and pens and paper and rulers and scissors and it's very hard to do the education to do your to follow your lesson plans if the kids don't have any supplies so the teachers end up going out and buying the things and doing that out of their pockets being in the public school system is always a challenge certainly teaching in the urban school system kids coming to school i think in the community where we teach uh, don't have a lot of the uh, skills that they need to be successful in school, especially from the home life. And so when they get here, in addition to having to just teach the content area, I think sometimes we're trying to teach life skills. We receive about $100 for union money that we're allowed to use for school supplies. Uh, the school will kind of give us some supplies as needed, but any good teacher spends above and beyond that out of their own pocket to fund their classroom and give the students what they need to be successful. If you were to divide the $100 by the number of students in the class, it works out somewhere in the range of $3.50 per student for the year. In science, we use a lot of disposable items, so things like cotton balls, Q-tips, white unlined paper, things that are going to be used and broken and cannot be replenished. So all of that will either come very quickly out of the $100 from the school or out of my pocket. So beyond the issue of teachers bringing in uh, from bringing in supplies and paying for them with their own monies, the newspapers were filled with deficits in the hundreds of millions of dollars for the Chicago public school system. And we realized that private industry and uh, private citizens were going to have to come to the fore and help teachers get the supplies they need and help them in any way we can. Emotionally, people are affected when they don't have what they need to succeed. Parents that have always been able to supply for their family are in economic situations currently that they never thought that they would be in. So they don't even have the ability to ask because they just never had to. ¿Cogiste toda tu tarea de la mesa? ¿Everything? Sí. ¿Todo? ¿En tu bag? Ok. Quiero que metas todo en tu bag y vamos a chequearlo. ¿Quieres ir? ¿Quieres agua? No, vamos pues, vamos a ver tu, tu, tu. Vamos a ver, this is like a problem. It's really hard right now. Apartments are like, you know, even though the house rates are down, but then if you go out and rent, right now we have a two bedroom apartment and we are paying a thousand dollars. If I try to get like a bigger or in a better area, the better the area is, the more expensive, the more, you know, the rent is gonna be. It's really horrible 
my two sisters, they're the same age, so they like to mess around. So by the end of the day, everything's on the floor. And Ivan, he's in his room, but he's a big artist, so he's always drawing. And he drew that for me. I finish my homework as soon as I come out of school. I read a lot, so, yeah. So the only problem we have is the girls that have their own messes. It's really hard right now. I'm like We're like living by check to check because it's really expensive, especially uniforms, you know, the school supplies. Sometimes they need for school trips or extra stuff for school, which is really expensive. Book bags, shoes, whatever, clothes. So it's, it's kind of really expensive. It makes me feel bad because you know some you know that I that I don't know that he needs the stuff sometimes you know I just we like try to get everything for the back to school supplies but sometimes it's hard you know or too expensive to get it so we just wait for the last minute and sometimes they need it before yeah so it makes me feel real bad because she doesn't have money that to spend on me like to to spend on me yeah because she doesn't have enough money. When, when students don't have the materials they need, just the basic materials, it, it really hits them in a lot of different ways. So number one, they can't perform what they need to perform in class if they don't have those school supplies. It also has a social stigma to them. Um, they feel that students are aware they're unprepared day after day. Maybe a teacher's pointing out that they're not prepared. So in addition to not being prepared to perform, there's also this like social stigma, this self-esteem issue. Um, many of the times our students are not getting the materials that they need because the money's just not there or the time is not there for the parents to take them. So all of that comes together with them just not being prepared for learning. I definitely have some concerns about their education um, in the Chicago public schools as they get older. Um, because Number one, I know we will utilize uh, public schools because we are a uh, single family income. So my concerns are that uh, maybe they won't have the same resources that other schools that do have more money, more funding have. I think the problem with a lot of families is um, they might not have as much time to be involved. But I also know um, when I speak to other people in my family, other moms have to work more than one job just to get the rent paid, to make a car payment, to pay down bills. Um, and they might come across that situation where they don't have the money to go out and buy a backpack. They might have to buy the most basic of our supplies, but what does make me sad is the kid that won't understand that. The kid that doesn't understand that um, that the rent is due, and that's why he can't have markers or scissors or construction paper. I do have students that come to me and say that they either can't afford certain things. Um, issues like field trips sometimes, where we have these wonderful field trips planned, where students are gonna go out into the city and actually you know, put in place the learning that they've done in the classroom and, and see it in the real world. We have kids that come and say, I can't go, we don't have the money, we don't have the five dollars for the bus. So it's, it's, it's heartbreaking, but it again shows us that if the right people step up to the plate, we can give these kids the opportunities to be successful by giving them whether it's supplies or funding for field trips and things of that nature. I have a 10-year-old daughter, her name is Jay Lee. And Jay Lee is in fourth grade, she attends school in Chinatown. 
I try to always be involved with um, my daughter's education. She looks forward to going to school. She's very particular about having everything ready, um, not only to go to school, but to be to school on time. I am also a student. Um, I just graduated with my bachelor's and I'm still in school for my master's. So not having school supply for us, <laughs> my daughter, myself, is really, really difficult. I'm always looking for school supplies. I even go to thrift stores <laughs> to buy paper or notebooks. Um, sometimes even from the job when we get rid of binders or uh, we have extra folders and things that we don't need, I'll utilize some of those. So her having the proper school supplies is necessary because her grade will be affected. I mean, her teacher even told her, if you don't have X, Y, and Z, then you know you won't be able to participate. You know you won't be able to get the proper grades. So you have to have these various materials. So yeah, it will be quite difficult for me because now I have to juggle my dollars, which are not very many, in order to make sure that she has what she needs. It's called making that sacrifice, giving up something so that she can have what she needs. I, I think the responsibility, you know, to me it's a, it's a moral imperative. As a society, we have an obligation to uh, give back to help build rather than to take down, to destroy. And I think in order to solve the education crisis, and sadly it is that, it's a crisis. And if we don't start to attack the problem now, it's only gonna get worse. And the cost to society is going to grow exponentially. Honestly, I don't know how Matthew found me or found the YMCA. I just know I got a call one day uh, from Matthew Kurtzman and with this idea of a school supplies drive and would the YMCA be a good partner for that. The back to school program provides school supplies for deserving children in Illinois. And basically what we do is we raise money throughout the year and we do a big distribution event in August so that the kids can go back to school with the supplies they need to succeed in the classroom. The reason that I chose school supplies was because I really felt that it was an easy way for us to start making an impact right away. We could have started raising money and donated it to building a school, but that takes a long time. And investments in a lot of programs can take months or years to come to fruition. The nice thing about raising money for school supplies and then giving those out to kids is, we raise the money, the kid gets the kit in August, so he can go back to school, and it has an impact the first day that he's there. What's included in the kit right now are paper products, loose leaf, filler papers, crayons, markers, pens, pencils, protractors, compasses, rulers, and then in some of the older kits for the elementary and middle school children, there are things such as a dictionary, a calculator, things that will be needed for the upper grades, and those children will have those particular items on hand uh, and don't have to go searching for them. While we're not you know, curing the, all the ills of Illinois education or families in Illinois, we feel that by providing these school supplies, we're doing something to improve the chances that Illinois children will do better in school each year. This education is so important, and whatever we can do to enhance their educational uh, situation, we're going to jump at that opportunity. I was so excited because I, because I was looking at it since we came in, and I was wondering what was in there. And when we opened it, we saw a whole bunch of supplies that, like, to help us, like, if we didn't have anything at school. The school supply, that was really a surprise for them all. It's like, I talk about it being like Christmas. It was really like Christmas. They were all stacked up in the corner, and the kids were like, they were, they were so excited about getting their little box and opening it up. The 
response from the parents that come with the children to assist them in picking up the school supplies is very heartwarming. They are very thankful for the supplies that we offer their children and in, in, in seeing in their faces the gratefulness for our program, it only fortifies us to do more next year and in each successive year. This is the seventh year of the back to school program. Each year, unfortunately, the need for children in Illinois to have school supplies grows, especially with the economy over the last couple of years. The need has, has increased year after year. And so we've been working uh, hard to raise additional funds through corporate sponsorships and through donations collected at all the currency exchanges. So it, it's a big struggle as a classroom teacher to kind of overcome that challenge. So that's why it's great that we have these back to school kits, giving the kids the materials that they need. I feel like it evens the playing field for students, gives them everything they need to be prepared so that day one of classes, they come prepared and they're ready to learn. I want them to go to college and I know they will go to college because they have to go to college, <laughs> whatever it takes. Like I tell them, I'm nobody, but you can be somebody. It's really hard, but that's what you want to be. If you want to be like your mommy, don't do nothing. You know, don't finish high school, don't finish college, and you're going to be like your mommy. But I don't want them to be like me. Our board of directors is uh, exploring the possibilities of including in the back to school kits two areas of uh, special concern. Number one is health and nutrition, and number two is physical fitness and exercise. I think the first thing we could do is stop complaining all the time and actually say, how can I help, right? Is there a, an ability for me to write a check? Or, and it doesn't have to be $100 or $1,000, it could be $10. I mean, these little kids cost around $11. It's, it's a trite saying, it takes a village, but, but that's the reality, is that everybody needs to contribute. And education comes in many different forms and, and is delivered many different ways. But ultimately, we all have to be a part of that process if we're going to give the child the opportunity to become the best individual that that person can be. We need volunteers. We need more people in the schools that are there to help out, that want to help out. So make a donation. Spend a day volunteering um, with a group like this that gets behind educational opportunities. Say, what can I do today to help make this a better thing? Because if all we do is complain about what a bad job everybody else is doing, frankly, we're not helping the case, right? So. Complain after you've spent a day or a week or a month or a year volunteering trying to make a difference in even if it's just one person's life. And when students know that people are looking out for them, that's when kids feel safe to take risks and that's when they feel successful.